Hello everyone. I haven't done a video like this before simply because it is risky. Assuming you did not skip the disclaimer, there is certainly a lot that can change in a young baby's life. I have had several requests for a video like this because so many parents and caretakers are nervous that their little ones could be autistic. They want intervention and therapy at the soonest time frame possible so that child will have a better chance at living a healthy life with as little frustration in society as possible. The most recent request I received is from a fellow in Italy working on his master's thesis at the University of Bologna. He wanted to learn about any potential signs of autism in ages 0 to 18 months, as well as parent interactions with a child. Such research could help future children with ASD-related issues. While I usually give the advice to wait until early toddler years to get an official diagnosis or become concerned, that does not change the fact that people start noticing issues much younger than age 3. Sometimes the signs they notice happen like a light switch, where the child seemed typical and healthy at the first year, then all of a sudden their behaviors change rapidly. For some people, they notice the behaviors have been steadily progressing since infancy. Others may not notice anything until later toddler years because babies start out being nonverbal and have many odd or cute behaviors that don't seem strange at the time. The following are five signs of potential autism in babies. They are based on professional research, but also based on our experiences raising three boys who were diagnosed on the autism spectrum. Your mileage may vary, so if something does not apply to your situation, please don't get upset or become alarmed. Also, I will be showing footage primarily of my oldest son, Ian, as he has the most severe case of autism and signs manifest in him much more strongly than the other two boys. However, Connor and Alistair showed similar signs, with Connor showing the least amount. Number 1. Very late milestone when learning to walk. All of our children took a long time learning to walk. For a typical child, walking occurs anywhere from 9 to 16 months. Ian started walking around age 2, as you can see here, which is very late. Connor started walking around a year and a half, which is somewhat late. Alistair took around 14 months, which is fairly typical. Number 2. Speech problems including made-up vocabulary. While every child starts out nonverbal until roughly age 1, people with autism will either never speak or have real difficulty with language early on. Here is Ian only using the word car at age 2 and trying to slur together what sounds like a sentence, but it's hard to hear what he's saying. Merry Christmas! Wow. Yeah, vroom vroom! Are you in your car? Are you in your car? We noticed all three of our boys had their own made-up language, where they would imitate people talking, but it sounds like babbling. You. No way! You do it! I do, I do, I do! Oh yeah? I do, I do, I do, I do! Oh really? Anything else you have to say? At age two, most children can speak in very small sentences. Ian still struggles with speech to this day. Number three, sensory issues over things we take for granted. Sometimes you hear children having issues with clothing tags or loud sounds and bright lights in public settings. But sensory issues can also be sensory craving. Many children with SPD or sensory processing disorder also crave sensory input in the form of constant touching, needing compression hugs, or even biting. Other children on the autism spectrum do not like being touched at all. In this video, you can see Ian constantly bumping into and touching his younger brother, Connor, as well as his little friend. It may be easily mistaken for roughhousing, but look at Ian's hands as he keeps making contact. It's as if he's craving touch. He's got to grab. In this video, you see Ian not reacting to how most children would react at their birthday. He clearly doesn't like the loud sounds associated with the occasion. Here Ian is in his high chair watching the blinking recording light, showing odd squinting behaviors. The small light would not bother most children. At the time, we just didn't know he had autism. I didn't know he had sensory issues as he was our first child and wouldn't be diagnosed properly until two years later. Number four, eye contact problems. 
You will notice the child not responding to your words or zoning out entirely as if inside their own little world. Many times your child will play in isolation by choice. All three of our boys still have issues with this. Oh, there's a big rivers in the way. Hey, Ian. That's great. That is great. Thanks for your contributions. <laughs> Hi, Ian. Hey, buddy. You jump. Go, Ian. Notice in this video clip how the other children are engaging with Santa. Ian's eye contact keeps wandering and he doesn't seem to be paying attention. Hi, bud. Hi. Hey, Connor. Yo, buddy. Yo, buddy. <laughs> hey, Connor. Connor. Hi. Ian. You tell me what you want. You tell me what you want. What do you want? What do you want, Ian? What is it? Tired? Ian, look at mommy. Ian. Ian. <laughs> Ian. See, he doesn't look at me when I talk to him or use his name repeatedly. Ian. And there's O'Connor. Ian, say hi. Ian. Hey, buddy. Hey. Say hi. Oh, we're in New York right now. Central Park. Number five. Frequent head banging. Banging his head again. He needs to do this all the time on his door. It's got me and Brittany worried that he might have some kind of autism. He might be on the spectrum. It's hard to say at this age, but I don't think normal babies do that. Maybe I'm wrong. This is a typical evening at our house. Ian. Sweetie. Headbanging is not the same as rocking like most babies do, where they get on their hands and knees and move back and forth. Similar to our other video about autism signs, this one occurs at a very early age, generally as soon as a child can sit up on their own. Both Alistair and Ian banged their heads on just about every service they could find, and it took a long time to redirect this behavior, although sometimes they still hit themselves in the head, as you can see from this recent footage of Ian hitting himself with a toy. We appreciate you watching as we strive to help others understand more about autism, and as we continue to learn more about autism. Remember, this is not a perfect science yet, and some things can change in children. If you have strong concerns that a child you know has autism, Please consult a psychologist, neurologist, or social worker for more help.